Um, another one I think is, you know, that people slip up on it is, you know, they hear that, um, you know, when I tell them, I was just like, you know, they say, well, what about dairy? And I was like, well, that's a bit of a gray area. And, you know, so if you can have it sometimes as a condiment, some people can't do dairy. Most people like with autoimmune issues, they really need to avoid dairy. They need to just be meat and water, and usually just red meat and water. And as close to grass fed and finished red meat and water as possible, especially while they're, they're healing and, and they're, uh, yeah, for usually for around this for six months and they can be a bit more tolerant of things, but dairy seems to have a problem with certain people, it's pro-inflammatory, you know, there's the A1 casein protein and A2 casein protein. A1 is more pro-inflammatory, but A2 is actually pro-inflammatory as well. It's just not as bad as A1, but people can still have problems with it. And so, you know, and there, there are other issues as well. However, one of the things that people find is that that they can actually stall their weight loss and their fat loss if they're eating like a lot of dairy. And that's that's a very common thing that I see is that when someone's stalling or even gaining weight, they're putting on weight and it's just like you talk to them and they're actually eating just a ton of dairy because they hear that, well, you can use dairy as a condiment, you can melt cheese on meat, you can have a bit of yogurt or sour cream on meat. And I always say, use as a condiment, meat is the meal. You can have a bit of this for flavor or texture or whatever, but you know, really focus on the meat. And they think, and all they hear is, yes, you can have dairy. And they just start eating just buckets of, of, of yogurt and, uh, you know, having sour cream and drinking milk. I mean, milk is a bad idea just because it has enough lactose to uh, increase your, your insulin and, and uh, kick you off ketosis and cause other metabolic issues. But a lot of people will just eat a ton of this. I, I, I don't know how many people I told in Australia when I moved, when I moved to Perth. And then told them exactly that in that way that, you know, to, to eat dairy sparingly and as a condiment only and um, went into detail about it. And, you know, I talked to him a few weeks later and like, how's it going? I was like, ah, well, I'm not really losing weight. And I was, I was like, okay, well, what's going on? What are you eating? It's like mostly halloumi. I'm like, what? what? Yeah. And they was just like, halloumi. go to Costco, just get a three kilo jug oh. of halloumi. And like they're just eating that's what they're eating they're just eating just halloumi cheese just all all day every that's day that's why if i'm at a place and and that cheese is there i don't even touch it not even one bite because halloumi is like see even though it doesn't have the sugar but it's got this casein protein or and there's like casein morphine addiction so let's just say there's mm. no sugar but it's got this addictive quality but it's so salty and fatty that's another combination that you just can't stop eating yeah and um you know uh, dr paul mason you know he he points out that there's actually you know a very very, very low grade small amount of, of opiate in milk and you know this is you know you're trying to you're trying to attract the baby cows or baby person or baby whatever saying hey you should have more of this so they're like wow i really want that i really want that now it's not you're not going to get high right um but there's enough of it that there's just that kind of like hey i really like that you get a bit of a dopamine kick and you're like hmm, i enjoy this i want more of this and i, I certainly noticed that i i really uh, need to limit my i just need to cut out milk is, is the main thing because i love milk I used to always drink like a gallon of milk a day growing up. I loved it. Really? But you were an athlete, yeah, like. It. Yeah, well, even, even when I was a kid, like a young kid, I just I loved milk. Um, we always had skim milk, though, you know, so it wasn't actually really all that nutritious, but um, I still loved it. I just loved the taste and just like all cold and nice and just I just chug it. And um, now you know, it, it just tastes like ice cream to me, you know, because I like my sweet, you know, I'm so sensitive to sweet now. I, I, I drink like, you know, that lactose is just like so sweet to me. That it's just like, I'm like drinking ice cream. I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. And I really don't want to stop. And uh, it, it's, it's not good. So, you know, I, I find that that compulsive uh, aspect of it as well. And so I understand it from people, but that is definitely something that will trip people up. And and I, I, again, I think people follow, you know, their, their, their bodies and hunger chase nutrients more than calories. And so you're drinking milk or you're having, and, you know, and that's going to screw you up too, because the carbohydrates are going to you know boost your, your hunger signals anyway, and you'll probably overeat the, um, you know, cheeses or whatever. I mean, they're going to have things that are good for you. 
but they don't have everything. It's not complete nutrition like the steak is. And so your body still wants those nutrients. And so what I find is that quite often people will eat the exact same amount of meat every day, regardless of the amount of dairy they eat. It, that dairy is always an addition. It's always added. So if they're having a piece of halloumi or a pound of halloumi, like they're still, it's in addition to the same exact amount of meat that they're eating generally. And so you, now you're just adding in extra, extra food that your body doesn't necessarily need or want. And, uh, and that can, that can definitely stall weight loss or even, even have people gain weight. So some people have to learn the hard way. <laughs> so what is the next carnival mistake, uh, carnival mistake number eight. So number eight was, I think that, uh, something that, that people may think that they're, they're very, very limited and they're like, I have no options. I have no choices. And then they get pretty sad about it. And they, they get sort of worn down and beaten down. They think like, oh, I just can't eat anything. I'm limited. You're all, you're looking at all the things that you can't eat as opposed to all the things you can eat. There's tons of things you can eat, you know? First of all, there's a lot of different animals in the world and you can, you can eat most of them. And there's a lot of different cuts from the different animals that we do eat as well. There's different steaks and roasts and, uh, you know, giblets and, and organs and uh, seafood, lamb, you know, uh, beef, chicken, fish. So there's tons and tons and tons of things. There's, you know, whole libraries full of cookbooks going over how to cook all these different cuts and all these different, uh, you know, meats and, and, you know, you know, there, there was like, my, my mom got me one, uh, it was like the big book of meat or something like that. And like, you know, the cottage meat, but like, there's just tons of these things. There's all these different roasts, all these different ways of cooking things. You know, there's tons of options. There's always different things you can, you can have, but, uh, but at the end of the day, like I, I 99% of what I eat is, is ribeye steaks you know, or New York steaks, steaks. You just you know? eat ribeye and New York steak. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. Well, you know, and what I was saying before with, with how we recognize flavors, if you're hungry, things taste better. You know, I think it was, um, who was it? I always think it's Ben Franklin, but maybe it wasn't, um, who said that uh, the best seasoning is hunger, right? And just, it just tastes better hungry. And so, when you are hungry and your body wants those nutrients that are in steak and you get a complete nutrient, you get a complete nutrition from fatty steak, it tastes amazing. And so if you're hungry, it will always taste amazing. So you can't get sick of it because if you're hungry, it's amazing. And uh, if it's too lean, then you, you, you'll get sort of bored of that. And your body's just like, hey, give me, give me something else, you know, because it wants the fat, it wants the nutrients from the fat. But if you're getting fatty meat, that fatty meat will taste good if you're hungry every time. And so that's the thing, you'll never get sick of it because it, it just always tastes good. And so, you know, and then you, you get to the point where you just go, I'm not really enjoying this anymore. If a steak doesn't taste good, you're not hungry, right? But if it does taste good, you are. And, and so that's the thing, right? Cows do, don't get sick of grass. Lions don't get sick of gazelle. And and and, and dolphins don't get sick of tuna, and et cetera. So, I mean, and the whales don't get sick of krill. Like, oh, my God, krill again? You know, like, no. That's what they want, you know? And um, and so that's the thing. That's what this is what I want as well. That's what you want as well. And because you know, it tastes good because we get those nutrients, and that's what eating is. It's about nutrient acquisition. You know, it's very dry. It's very boring to put it that way, but that is what it is. You know, we are trying to get nutrients. We are trying to build and maintain animal tissue. We are animals, and that's and so we need those nutrients. And, you know, you can, you can get those nutrients and get rewarded for that with this positive feedback of that tastes good. And then it goes away. And because your body's saying, nope, that's enough. Stop there. And so those, that positive feedback goes away. Next, second, last mistake, <laughs> mistake number nine. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, you know, trying to um, calorie count or portion control or trying to figure that out, you know, just listen to your body. You know, nature's natural, just happens all on its own, right? And so, again, going back to taste, if it tastes good, you're hungry. 
right? As long as you're just eating meat, you're not on any medications or eating carbs or anything like that, or artificial sweeteners. If you're eating naturally, you can listen to your natural instincts. And this is like every animal in the wild does this. You know, man, people may you know say, oh, but I have a study that says I, I don't care. You know, no animal in the wild counts their calories. I've never seen a, a koala with a calculator trying to punch out, you know, their macros for the day, right? You know, like they, they don't have, you know, like, you know, uh, athletic coaches or, or, you know, trainers saying, oh, well, you want to have, you want to have this and you want to do that. They just eat, you know, they just eat the food that they're supposed to eat. And eventually they just something in them tells them that's enough. And so we should have that as well. If you're eating what you're biologically designed to eat, you should have that off switch. You should have an on and an off switch. And so that satiety signal, that hunger signal, that, that reward from eating, that positive feedback, you know, those are all these signals. And, you know, why would they exist if they weren't meant for something? Right. People say, like, oh, we should always leave the table hungry. You should always be a little hungry. You know, it's like people you know, have this hunger signal just to just to tell you to eat and eat and eat so you could save up, you know, for for famine. But that doesn't explain why you have a shut off at some point. You know, that's suggesting that you're just you're always going to be voraciously eating. That's not true. You know, I mean, there are there are diseases and uh, and genetic disorders that uh can actually cause that and that and that's a problem and they actually they they hurt themselves with how much they eat and, and um so you know that's that's not how it is with us you know we do get satisfied we do get to the point where we go like hmm, that's enough even when we're you know when it's deranged and we're eating carbohydrates we're eating sugar or on medications that make us more hungry we still hit a point where our bodies are saying stop now right so that doesn't make sense. That explanation doesn't make sense. And it doesn't fit with the observed phenomena either, which is animals in the wild eat until they choose to stop and they are not fat. And I say, well, that's because they're in the wild and they're running around and all that sort of stuff. That doesn't explain animals in the zoo. I've never seen a fat giraffe or a fat zebra or a fat lion. And they are, they're living sedentary lives. They live in a box, you know, and yet they're hopefully being fed what they eat in the wild. And then some animals, they're not being fed what they eat in the wild. They're being fed something outside of that or being like, you know, packaged food and kibble and things like that. They will get fat and they will get sick. And I've, I've spoken to zookeepers and they're like, you know, do you ever give them kibble or this and the other? And I'm like, are you out of your mind? You give them that stuff, they'll get human diseases, right? And they say that human diseases like diabetes, and heart disease, liver disease, you know, cancer, autoimmune diseases, arthritis, things like that. Well, they're not catching it from us. It's the food that's causing that. It's causing that in them. It's also causing that in us. And when you eat what you're supposed to eat, you, you step right out of that game and it does not apply to you. And that's what it is. It's, this, this isn't a diet. This is a lifestyle. This is a choice. You say, I'm going to be healthy. I want to be as healthy as I possibly can be for as long as I can be. And, you know, that's, that's, a, it's a nice feeling. It's actually really good. You know, a diet is something that you do so you can lose weight real quick and then fit into your clothes for a wedding or something like that, you know, but this is, this is just being healthy long-term, uh, you know, and, uh, and just feeling amazing every single day. All right. Last one. Carnival mistake number 10. Um, so I think this is, uh, you sort of touched on it previously, but you know, basically setting unrealistic goals or, or focusing on the wrong thing, you know, wrong aspect. I think that's something that can trip people up. So we're talking about that, you know, example of, you know, someone who was, who was reversing all these diseases, got rid of, or, or you know, uh, improving their diabetes, improving their autoimmune issues, but their weight wasn't coming down. And so they felt that that was, that was a failure and that this doesn't, didn't work for them. And they act, they actually stopped, they stopped doing it because their focus was on weight loss. They wanted to lose weight. That was why they were doing this. That's why they wanted wanted to uh, go on a carnivore diet because they heard that you can lose a lot of weight on it. And you can. You just need to heal your body first and you need to get rid of your leptin insensitivity and other sorts of issues. And, and, and your, your hormones and body need to, and your metabolism need to you know, get better. That takes a long time 
you know, for for some people. And, you know, and so the dramatic fat loss can take longer for some people. But, you know, you need to focus on your health first and foremost, because this is the healthiest way for us to eat biologically. And, you know, you are going to be far better off. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, you can starve yourself, you know, and lose weight. You can go on, you know, on a, on a, on a, you know, refugee camp diet and just, or a concentration camp diet where you just, you know, starve yourself. That's not actually good for you. You're not losing, you're losing fat, but you're also losing muscle uh, and bone density. So, you know, that's not good for you. That's not healthy. That's not something you want to do. And then when you start eating again, you boom, you balloon back up. Why? Because your metabolism is so low and you've been in a famine and then your body goes, okay, we've got food. We just need to store it or we're going to die. Right. And so, you know, there's, there's that famous study looking at uh, the biggest losers uh, show where they lost a bunch of weight, but they actually just, they just destroyed their metabolism and they actually checked them six years later, their metabolism was still not recovered at that point wow. so you know some reasons for that you know maybe they just like trashed it or maybe they just they just kept doing all the stupid habits that they learned during that show to try to keep this weight off i don't know but either way it wasn't good and so you know this this is about health and you can you can fix your health come off medications and fix your hormones and then eventually when that all sort of gets down to, to appropriate levels, then your body, you, you can ramp up your metabolism and you can lose weight healthily and safely. And so that's the main thing. So setting those goals, focusing on the wrong thing and, 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 and the scale is the really wrong thing to focus on. Because oh, say, the scale is like the worst thing in the world. It's like, what, yeah. what, what is it measuring? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So you're you're looking at a number. And like I said, I, I lost 23 pounds in 10 days, but then I didn't lose any weight at all. But I was losing a lot of fat and I was putting on muscle and bone. And so I was very happy with that. I, I thought it was hilarious. I was just like, well, that's crazy. I knew things were changing. Hey, I felt better. I wasn't going to just stop that anyway, because I felt amazing. And my my workouts were so much better and I felt so much better. My sleep was so much better. And I was just, I was visibly changing. And so that obviously was having a very positive effect. And then people can, you know, a lot of these long-term Facebook groups for, for carnivore that are, you know, 10, 15, 20 years old, like zeroing in on health and zero carb health. They, from the beginning, they were like, do not talk about the scale. You know, and like we're we're not that's not what this is about. And so, you know, you have a, a you know, like a non-scale success sort of thing that have little abbreviations. I need to for make that. a t-shirt. So I made these t-shirts, ditch the scale. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> to get the message out so people know butter is gold, yeah. eat meat, not wheat, no carb zone, ditch the <laughs> scale. That's a good one. Thank yeah. you. Ditch the scale. Yeah, no worries. And so, yeah, so that's that's the main thing. You know, it's just like this is about health first and foremost. Very distant second, you could maybe say body composition. You know, mm -hmm. nowhere on the list is your weight, your overall weight. You know, because that's not what we're talking about. You know, and there are all the are these studies. You know, like with the biggest loser and, and other sorts of things, where yes, you lost fat, but they also lost muscle and bone density. That's not healthy. That's not long term sustainable. There's no shortcuts. There's no way to just cheat and just 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 manufacture the results you want. You need to do it the right way, and uh, the right way is, is eating your biologically appropriate diet, which is what a high fat carnivore diet is for humans, and then you know, putting in the effort and, and exercising. Those are the only ways. That's the only way that you're going to get reliable, reproducible, and healthy, safe results. And you're going to get the best results. You know, I've never in my life been able to maintain a low body fat percentage with without any effort, just with what I'm eating. 
you know, without working out. I haven't, I haven't really been to the gym in literally months now, you know, but I'm not out of shape because I cannot get out of shape because of what I eat. I can get in a lot better shape, but I never get out of shape. I'm out of shape for me. But most people think that I'm I'm in the gym every day, twice a day because of how I look, but I'm not, you know? And, and, and so that's just for eating meat. I've never, ever found it easier to put on muscle than when I'm eating a strictly carnivore diet. So, you know, focus on the right things, just focus on your health and, and understand that there, there really isn't any other way that's going to get you better results faster. I have so many people, you know, talk about they're getting all these benefits, getting all these results and they're losing weight. I'm like, Oh, I lost 20 pounds in a month, but oh, I just have so much more to lose. Oh, I just wish it would go quicker. I'm like, dude, you lost 20 pounds. That's like, huge. You know, you t- who loses another twi- diet like, that, yeah, yeah 20 pounds yeah, a like, lot of people massive. are saying like like two pounds a month or something like that is like you know that that's a healthy safe way to go or whatever the hell it is you know it's 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 way less than people are getting and then a lot of people are getting on a carnivore diet and they're like oh, God, but it, but it didn't happen now and it's just like dude it's happening faster than literally anything else you'll ever go, you're ever going to do and it's doing it in a way that's giving you health as opposed to detracting from your health and it's sustainable and you enjoy it and you like and you it's like this is not something that you just you're suffering through you know i have enjoyed every single steak i've ever eaten in my life right i'm i am thrilled every day that i get to eat what i eat you know